Hey, me, buddy! Oh! Yeah, that last video unleashed quite the comment storm, didn't it? Now, you guys left me a ton of comments, and there was also a lot of great discussions going on here. But in an effort to try to summarize this up in a way that's actually kind of concise, I've boiled it down to about four points. Ultimately, my last experiment here was never really going to give us a good data set. And the reason was because there was a couple of problems. So most of this comes down to its starting condition. I started off with five tons of molten aluminum down here, because that's what I could actually pump into that tank right there and run it through the system and tried to measure just how much I was getting out of it. Now, the problem with that setup here is that it takes a certain amount of energy in order to phase change this from a liquid to a gas initially. So we're always losing a little bit of energy here, just trying to get everything up to a stable state, which is what this test did not have. It didn't have a steady state. So therefore the results from here to the right, we're always going to read lower than the first one because we're always dealing with the same amount of energy, but the starting condition was not the same. The second issue with this is that I had an error in the automation. Unfortunately, I had plugged in this wire right here and not plugged it in to the output sensor right here. So the problem is that more molten aluminum could flow down here, which would actually create uh, a little bit too much heat down here and sometimes cause this to just become too hot and not phase change quite as much. So this experiment here was retested with the corrected automation. You can see the vast difference here. The first one is obviously much higher than everything else. Um, again, because the starting condition is not the same. However, as we move through multiple chambers here, you do see that the first one is kind of low. The second one is more efficient. Third one's more efficient. The last one is pretty close to the first one. So we can see here that the corrected automation actually does kind of yield some more promising results, which is good. And that's kind of what we'd expect. However, this brings me to the third point, and that is that it's kind of hard to quantify our results here. Now, I did make this fancy bar graph inside of the game uh, because it's a nice visual way of looking at it. However, if we really want want to get a good, accurate measurement of what's effectively working here and uh, really digging into the details of what's going on inside of the salt reactor. We need something that's l much less complicated uh, and we can just count the data more accurately. So we don't have to convert this to electricity, which is then running through the steam turbine, which is a giant variable all by itself. So in today's experiment, we're going to solve these problems by just getting rid of all of the molten aluminum problems here and just having a steady flow of molten aluminum. We're going to get rid of the massive variable, which is the steam turbine, throw that out, and we're going to quantify our data in a much more finite way. All right, so I'm trying to come up with a really accurate way to measure this setup right here and to do it without using the steam turbine. Basically, I need to mimic what the steam turbine does, which is remove thermal energy from a system and turn it into power. Now, I don't really care about power. All I want to do is remove thermal energy. So I have bodies of water over here that are all at zero degrees Celsius. And what I'll do is I'll combine them into tanks at the end of a uh, automation sequence that runs for a certain amount of time and therefore I can count the amount of water that's in there and count the temperature that's it's at so I know how much energy has moved into the system at the same time I can also count how much molten aluminum has moved into a tank and at what temperature it's it's at so I can count how much thermal energy has been removed from the molten aluminum therefore we could figure out just how efficient the transfer is from moving from one side to the other so the thing here that we're trying to hack is the efficiency ratio. What we want to get is more energy out than we're putting in. That's why we're going through all the trouble of actually trying to boil molten salt here. However, to accurately simulate what is actually happening up here inside of a steam turbine, I do need to run this at a specific temperature. So that's going to be allowing the energy to be removed when we're above 130 degrees Celsius and stopping the energy from entering when we're you know, above that as well. However, the amount of energy that's still moving through here is going to be quantifiable, right? Because when this continues to flow through here, we're still building up more heat down below. And if it's running hot, then the output is going to be hotter. So we should be able to quantify everything here while simulating what is actually happening inside of a steam turbine. And the extra data that we're going to gain here is how much energy we can move in a given amount of time, which is important because it gives us an idea of just how many steam turbines we might be able to run, which starts to weigh into how much molten salt do we use and what arrangements might allow us to actually effectively transfer more energy than some other arrangements. Because the thing is, if you have all the energy in the world down here, but you can only draw a little bit of power out of it, then it's not going to be useful. 
So that's what this arrangement is doing here. You can see it, it's running it every time we go to 130 degrees Celsius right here. This door closes, we heat it up, it then jumps up to right around 160 or so. And then our mock turbine starts to run, moving the liquid through here. So based on everything I can do here, I think that's the correct setup. So what I'm going to use to collect my data over here is going to use the high flow liquid reservoirs right here. They have multiple inputs, which allows us to, well, feed it with up to three inputs, which is great because it takes multiple streams of water just to keep up with the amount of heat we're dealing with here. And it's going to be set up something like this. I just have three tanks. So when my test is running, I'm going to activate this shutoff valve so I'm going to siphon off all of that aluminum. And then that aluminum runs into the tank. Boom, and then that actually feeds into this tank and that feeds into this tank so we can just kind of collect all that data. So that's data in the form of liquid and temperature. Pretty cool. All right, so when it comes to the water, I need to get all three of these over here to the same tank, which is awesome. I can do that with a high flow tank. So we're going to do that. This feeds into here as well and then this feeds into this one. So now we're bringing in 30 kilograms of water per second. And we can move all of that data to the right. So that makes sense, right? So then we add power to that via the ZP module here, which is basically an unlimited battery. Pretty nice. And then to run my test, here's what I'm going to do. I want to collect data for a consistent amount of time. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a master switch down here. And then it's going to run all of my tests at the same time. So what this is, is it's going to be a series of buffer gates, and that's just going to run off of a switch real quick. And then this will stay active for up to 600 seconds. So when that is active, which I will just pause the game and blip it real quick, you can see the timer will start, which is going to activate all of our little valves right there, which is going to collect our data and that will happen for 600 seconds. So, how I know that this is working correctly is over here I should have 600 kilograms of liquid at the end of our test. So down here I'm going to add a wireless receiver. This is set to the automation signal that the other one is putting out. I'll then collect, connect all of these. Very quickly here we're just going to turn this on. Flip the game for just a second, turn it off. Now the timer has started. This thing should start collecting data here for the next 600 seconds. So you can see the liquid is now being diverted away from the valves that would otherwise be dumping it overboard. Now everything here is insulated because we're in a bunch of void, so there's nothing being saturated anywhere. All right, so we can see the automation is just about done here. So if we go down here, we should see this turn off. And now I should have tanks full of data, baby. Look at this. Hmm. So what do we have? Five, five, and 3,320 kilograms. So what that shows me is I'm going to need more tanks. <laughs> we can also see the numbers right here. I should have six tons of aluminum down here, but unfortunately I have 820. So, all right, so here's here's the thing. I should have six tons of aluminum down here, but I only have 5,820. Hmm. And this is running continuous. Oh. I think some of it is left in the pipe. Darn it. <laughs> Okay, so apparently we can adjust the amount of capacity if we go and modify the config file. So long as I can find the correct config file. <laughs> how how do I know? Oh, yo, 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 yo. oh geez. Oh no. Nope. 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 Oh, now I've got a meta. Check this out. I can just keep going like this. Ooh. Boom. Boom. High flow storage. Ha ha! Liquid storage capacity. 30,000, baby. Mm. Keep hanging in there, Autonauts. I've got a lot of research to do. All right, so let's run another test here real quick. Turn it on. Flip the game. Turn it off. And there we go. I want to see six tons. Don't let me down. Ooh, look at that! 
Six tons! Ooh, and then right up there, 13.8 tons. Beautiful, nice, clean data. I like it. All right, so now let's see if I can do something with this. Okay, so what's the info I need? I need the specific heat capacity of aluminum. Point nine one, if I remember correctly. How about that? Well, would you look at that? Well, you can't see it. <laughs> All right, there it is, right there. Times the degrees of Celsius times the specific heat capacity, which is a really big number. <laughs> What that means is this number, ooh, is not the same. Interesting. It's close, but it's not the same. So that's an interesting number right there. Only 85% of the thermal energy was transferred. Okay, so if I can use the snipping tool, this would be great. Ah, beautiful. Now I can see exactly what the experiment looks like. Okay, so for the second test here, I'm, what I'm hoping to see here is a control. We're not running it through any sort of salt or anything like that. So the energy that I'm going to count over here should be the same up here. We should have that be very, very close to one to one. I'm also going to retest this one down here to see if there's any sort of variation. So there we go, ran the number there. And any moment now I'll have some data. Data, ooh, okay, that's good. Let's take a look at our numbers. So this is test number two right down here. Okay, so let's take a look at the control group up here. The first one moved 14 and a half tons. The temperature out was 28 degrees, and the amount of molten aluminum that was actually transferred was six tons at 1,508.2. Um, <laughs> okay, which means we had a six and a half percent increase somehow. So somehow this performed better than 100%. Uh, what? Okay, all I could do is just rerun this test to see just how consistent this is from one to the next. All right, so constantly retesting the same thing over and over again is going to be really boring. So at least we have one more spot up here where we can add eh, something new to the mix. So what I'm going to take is this chamber right down here and then we're going to add kind of a, a mid spot, right in the middle there. All right, so for this third test, I'm going to put 600 kilograms here, 600 kilograms there, and we'll kind of see what this does. I don't know, maybe it'll do something. So that's the same amount of salt that we have down here, it's just separated by a tile in the middle. I kind of doubt this will do anything except for confuse the game even more. But in the last test, there was some sort of thing happening with multiple stacks. So maybe maybe it'll work out. Clicking that liquid pipe button is uh, almost nuclear. There we go. So I'm just going to let this run for a little bit and let it do its thing. So maybe the hope here is that this is small enough to where it'll phase change, bump this up, phase change. And then when that condenses, maybe this will condense and I don't know, do something funny. Okay, so we can see this one ends up in salt gas and then it does condense. So it is flipping a little bit and then this one's kind of working like the first stage there. Eh, interesting. Maybe there's something to it. It's going to take a little while though. This has to even out. That needs to be a vacuum and then has some water in it. Okay, so this looks interesting. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, 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 hmm. What I'm not seeing is a lot of liquid coming down here, which isn't really doing the double phase change like we, we're looking to see. Oh, there it does it. There it does it. But not as much. Let's see if it does anything. All right, so let's take a these results. All right, so the third time running this test here, we're at 98.8. So that's in line with the previous test, which was 97.8. So those are so close that it's probably just a run to run variance. The first one might have been a little bit cold somehow. Uh, maybe I didn't let it heat it up long enough. Not sure. But then again, maybe there is just enough variance that it is anywhere from 85 to 98%. I don't know, I could sit here and run this for days, it seems. However, just running straight aluminum through here has resulted in 107% again, which is in line with its previous result, which was 106.5. So again, just only a 1% difference right there. But also again, it's an increase somehow. 
But now for the one that we're all curious about. The multi-stage uh, thingamabob. Ooh, interesting. The temperature out is 1,602. So that's a higher temperature out by about 100 degrees Celsius. However, the temperature out for the water is also pretty much in line with the rest of these here at 27.4. Ooh, ooh, interesting. So this result right here, this machine with its very interesting multi-chamber thing actually transferred 150%. So there's something to this. I knew it would work. Hey, we got something. All right, so it looks like we're on to something here with this multi-stacking situation. So let's throw a couple different scenarios at this same sort of thing. First off, we're going to add a third stage to this. So rather than doing this number right here, I'm just gonna drop it down like that. Okay, now I'm still gonna work with the same amount of molten salt, so now we're only working with 400 kilograms per chamber down here, so a little bit less. Okay, so for my other test down here, I'm going to try a loop system. So we're going to boil down here on the bottom left and then condense on the top right. Maybe there's something to that. All right, so I'm going to test this loop idea. So how this one's going to work is we are going to boil the molten salt down here and then it will condense on the top right over there looping looping system. We'll do steel just like that. I mean, my money's on this thing. It, it just looks too cool not to work well. Honestly, let's see how this works. I mean, isn't that cool? Bloop, 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 bloop. I mean, look at how that's working. We got salt gas right there, liquid right down there. It's cool. Now look at this guy go. Turns into gas. How about you? Huh? Hmm? Oh, there you go. You got a little bit. Ooh, that's gonna take a while to heat up. We gotta wait for this to reach a steady state before we can run our test. <sighs> it's gonna take a bit. Okay, so while this thing's waiting to do its thing, I can at least start designing the next chambers over here. Woo, gotta be careful. That liquid bridge thing would be a bit of a challenge. So one really interesting idea that I heard was what happens if you were to do like tiles? So what you're doing is creating diamond or whatever material we're going to use here. We're just using diamond because it's consistent with everything we've done. And then you put molten salt inside of here. And the idea is that you do this number and you start to tile things out. What happens when you do that? Whoa, don't do that one. I mean, this thing right here is one of those, like it, it almost has to work because it looks so cool. I mean, is that just not the coolest thing you've ever seen? Ooh, I hope this works because this would be so cool. All right, let's watch this phase change. Okay, so one observation I'm making right down here is that we do get a phase change on this one and we do get that phase change to propagate from here down to this one. However, the one on the bottom is just always too high and that's because this aluminum is just running in continuously. I feel like the only way to truly get a triple is to add a sensor inside of there or at least a liquid sensor. So I can snip that right there and then use this guy right here to go in and then out. And what this is looking for is molten salt. Um, molten. So when it detects molten salt, it brings in more. So we've added a bit of automation to this, but what I'm trying with. <laughs> okay, so we can see here by not allowing the molten aluminum to flow through here, we're still able to get these nice little phase changes up here between the first one and the second one as we're kind of moving more and more water through, which is awesome. I feel like this thing's going to be really slow. It might be really efficient, but I feel like it's going to be super slow. You know what? The automation here hasn't really worked at all. This is 1,470 degrees, 166, and then 1464. So basically this just isn't transferring heat anymore. I think one of the ideas that we were talking about here was actually closing doors to transfer the heat more effectively from down here up there every time this was closed so that you can kind of draw heat from all of this rather than just the top chamber. So I believe the answer we're looking for here might work something like this. So we're gonna let this heat up for a little while because it needs to 
needs to get up there first. But the idea is that we're going to connect this automation wire up to these doors. Maybe this chamber looks more like this. So when the doors are closed, everything goes down to a liquid. And maybe I don't put a door up here because that's just kind of taking heat and going around all of my reactors, which is what I don't want. <laughs> Things are getting tricky now. <laughs> there you go, do that number. Meanwhile, this thing down here is just looking like, ugh, it's looking beautiful. I think that one's gonna win. <laughs> All right, so here's the, cra this stuff is moving heat up there, um, but it's not, it's not condensing this. Anyhow, whatever, let's run some numbers here and see what happens. This is so nice. I can walk away from this experiment and let it run, or I could just jump over here and kind of play this game for a little bit. Beautiful multitasking. Love it. Come on, Autonauts. Research a little faster. All right, so let's take a look at these results here. I retested this one up here and once again received 148% transferred. So there was an increase there. So that was nice and repeatable, which is good. I'm seeing a lot of consistency within this test, which makes me feel like it's working well. But now for the interesting triple chamber with its crazy door accessories. Hmm, interesting. So this did see an improvement. However, it wasn't quite as good as the double chambers up there. And to be honest, there's a lot more complexity involved here. So mm, I don't think it's too promising, but come on loop. I know you're good. Show me some great results. What do we have? Ooh, 13.7 tons at 27 degrees. But the big question here is what is the temperature of the aluminum? Ooh, not so good. One, five, six, eight. Meaning that this was only 122.5, which is still an improvement over the straight aluminum to water transfer. Although it really isn't that big of an increase. However, it's the However, I will mention that this is the only single chamber arrangement that is showing a positive result. So, what if we multi-stage a loop? Hmm. <laughs> All right, so to do that, I think what I want to do, well, you know what? We're just going to extend the diamond just a little bit like that. And then we'll copy it through like this and just get rid of the liquid pipes. I mean, really, what are the chances that something like this works? Although one thing I would say here is that it doesn't have the obsidian behind it, which is kind of an inaccuracy. So we're going to need to retest this one with obsidian to see if that makes a difference. All right, so let's see if we can get rid of this. We don't need that. Bleh, please don't melt everything. Thank you. Now, just like before, rather than putting all of the salt in one spot, I'm going to split it between the two chambers. So each one of these is getting 600, while this one down here has 1,200. Oh, that looks promising. <laughs> All right, now let's give some crazy thing like this a try. I'm, I'm just curious if there's anything to it. I'm not even sure where to locate this thing. Like maybe, maybe like this? <laughs> and then the second question I have is, do I run the heat through the middle or do I run it through the bottom? We've already seen that the triple chamber thingy bob doesn't really work. Mm, I don't know. The only difference here is we're not going to have a lot of salt in each one. It's only going to be a small amount. So maybe there's something to it. Let's run it through the bottom, see what happens. We'll get real fancy with it too, right? So just like this. I suppose another arrangement would be like little mini reactors right, that are too tall, and then just have diamond on top and bottom, just like this. Basically as small as you can get, and then maybe tile this out like this. Oops, not like that, no. I don't really see the advantage of doing this, but maybe there's something more to it. You never know until you try. Okay, so that's phase changing a bunch. That's kind of promising. Hmm, hmm, that's not good news for the loop. It looks like this is just straight up salt gas. And while this does do a little bit of puffing, this does not do any condensing. And if it's not going to do any condensing, well then, let's see how it's actually going to work. So I'm going to introduce everybody's favorite variable, temperature shift plate. <laughs> let's 
see if it works. All right, so what in the world is going on here? I mean, the rest of this isn't doing it, but look at that. Oh. All right, so while that does look cool, it looks like it's destroyed everything in there. Like it's only a very small amount of material. Oh, I saw a little liquid down there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, maybe. Man, we'll give it another half cycle, but I'm not feeling too good about that. Just like I'm not feeling too good about this one. I don't, uh, that thing just isn't working. Okay, so now that's starting to go back and forth. 123, 123. <laughs> and then it starts to pulse really fast. That's, wait a minute. Wait a minute, here's what you do. Oh, yeah, come on now. You know, that brings up an interesting idea. Diamond transferred there. Top transferred there. And then something like this. Oh, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. This thing just doesn't want to work. Let's run the experiment and see what numbers we get. All right, the data's in. Let's take a look at the results. Hmm, the crazy window tile, molten salt, checkerboard? We're gonna call this the checkerboard system. While this is the craziest looking system we have here, it was actually the closest thing to 100% we've seen all day. <laughs> At 101.15%. So if you truly want to transfer the most accurate amount of heat from one spot to the other, make a giant checkerboard, apparently. <laughs> So what about the loop-de-loop? -loop? How'd that one do? 1,730? Whoa! This bad boy right here output 250%. Whoa! Now that's something we can work with. Mmm. <laughs> How? How? I don't know. But those are the numbers. So there is a catch with this thing, and that is that it only throughput 8.2 tons of water, whereas everything else is put through 13.7 tons. So it's running slower than anything else here. However, it is far more efficient, which sounds like an amazing opportunity to optimize this design. Now, how did we do down here once we added in some drywall? Well, this thing transferred 122%. Now, its previous result was 122.48. So, yes, it's uh, pretty much the same now, isn't it? So, what this tells me is that, hmm, we really gotta look at these loops. Which means we should probably play with the mass. I bet you, if we increase the mass up here on top, we could then potentially drive the lower mass stuff down here to convert more often, which means we could also possibly convert more loops down to smaller amounts. But what about this design? I mean, this one looks interesting. We got a two to one sort of thing, meaning that we have less energy moving to higher energy. So when the higher energy gets dumped, it will then possibly cascade more dumping down to the lower stuff. Hmm, not only that, Maybe there's something to the uh, temperature shift plate. That is uh, a variable here. So just out of curiosity, here we go. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go all out. And this will be my last test for this video, which I guarantee you guys are dreaming up more ideas, which means we could come up with all sorts of crazy stuff here. Oh, if that doesn't look promising. Ooh, 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 ooh. Why is there only a little bit of liquid there? And that's not good. Ah, whatever, let's just do this number. Boom, give that a try. Close this down. Still hot enough. All right, so how do we make a loop even better? Yeah, the second loop, but you reverse it. Simple. Ooh, yeah, that looks cool. That's gonna be cool. Oh, that's gonna be cool too. Oh darn it, there's just not enough, there isn't enough molten salt here. That's only a few kilograms. For whatever reason, it kind of gets destroyed by doing just in this really small area. Like there's not a lot there. There's a lot there, a lot there, not a lot there. 
I mean, that liquid is like jumping all over the place. Eh, let's see what it does though. Yeah, this isn't stable. How's this doing? Ooh, it phase changes. And then it gets drawn out. Yeah, I think we might wanna add a temperature shift play right up there. And I'm gonna go full out on my theory here. Let's just clear the floor. Okay, so I'm going to put 2,400 kilograms in this spot. So this is pretty high pressure salt gas up here. But let's see, will it drive it down, causing this stuff to be driven very, very quickly. You can see we got 60 kilograms per tile down there, 240 up here, so a lot more mass up top. All right, so I noticed a little problem right here. This molten salt is remaining there, so that's not good. If I get rid of that though, now that liquid's flowing down. Okay, that's good too. All right, so now we got a lot of molten salt up there. Will this bring the temperature down enough to actually convert this down? It's close. Come on, you can do it. No, it doesn't want to drop the phase down here. So I think we're gonna try a little bit of automation, which I know I should be running an experiment just to get another data point for each change I do to see if I'm improving or not improving. But I'm up against the clock, so I'm not going to go and spend all that time on it. We're just gonna go with what looks right here. And I think what looks right is if we get a little bit of phase change down here, and a lot of phase change up there. So there's a little bit of that, a little bit of that. What I'm looking for is, ooh, there we go. The first time I saw that, a little bit went in. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a little phase change. A little phase change. I noticed something else here. It seemed to happen very, very quickly. So we're gonna put a filter gate on it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Although it did form up right there and there. Okay. Do a little bit more tweak in here. Drop that down. Ooh. And then I'm going to get rid of this tile right there. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe that might be it. Look at that craziness. Makes me think I want to take this, bring it right back up. All right, looking back at the automation over here. And then I'm running first through a filter gate so I don't have a false positive. And I'm also going to run through a buffer gate so it stays active, so I can have really, really good control over what's going on with this. So we wait until we abs absolutely need to bring in heat, and then we keep the heat on for just a little bit longer. All right, I'm getting even more crazy with it. So if that detects for longer than 60 seconds, then we definitely want to run it. Okay, I'm not really convinced I need all of that salt up there. That might just be too much. Let's go back to 600. That means it's the same as these two down here. Ooh, yes. All right, so what I ended up doing down here is I put 300 kilograms of salt in each one of these, 600 in this one. And I feel like that's working out pretty good. <laughs> All right, so I was trying to make a system down here that works with like the cheater pipes, but I ended up melting my steel drain. Um, so that's rather impressive. And this game just has no idea what to do with it. We got solids, liquids, gases. I, at, at one point I saw this was at 1,700 degrees. Now it's super cold. <laughs> well, that, hmm. <laughs> okay, another thing I'd like to mention here is that I put a temperature shift plate in this really small double thing. Uh, and it's just taking forever to heat up, like, Actually, you know what? It doesn't work because the temperature shift plate just keeps moving that energy out of there. It never never actually separates. So what if I do that? Oh, look at that. That's interesting. That's, um, all right. That's a. <laughs> what if we slow this down? What is it doing? Liquid, 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 liquid. Man, I don't know. It's cool though. Oh, now this one's doing it. All right. So let's give these two systems here a test. Here we go. All right, so the results are in. This system up here throughput 135.5% energy, which is actually a little bit less than when it didn't have this temperature shift plate. So temperature shift plate did not help. Now, what about this system down here? Well, it's a trickle system. It is not moving a lot through this thing at all. However, it did produce 209%. And the real trick here is that it <laughs> barely any molten aluminum is moving through it. So it's really slow. But 
it still has that great opportunity to be super awesome if we can figure out the right configuration. So if you got some ideas for me, you know where to leave them. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode of Oxygen Not Included. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out.